You're watching ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. For about a million stranded travelers, the holiday travel nightmare may be coming to an end. Washington, D.C. correspondent Raquel Martin has the latest. Good evening. Well, Thursday afternoon, Southwest Airlines announced it would be returning to a nearly normal schedule come Friday. That's after thousands of flights were canceled in the past week. Now, Southwest Airlines employees who we spoke to in recent days say they are not at all surprised by this system-wide failure. Southwest Airlines flight attendant Union Vice President Corliss King says the airline's computer scheduling system was a disaster waiting to happen. There was a perfect storm, no pun intended. Combined one historic winter storm, hundreds of thousands of holiday travelers, and decades-old computer technology. We had a lot of things happen at one time. And what that did was expose the real underlying issue, which is our challenges in our technology and our inability to quickly recover. King has worked for Southwest Airlines for 12 years and says employees have long warned company executives about the flaws in their employee scheduling system. She says the execs just didn't listen. We're the first people to know when the operation on paper is failing, but we do not necessarily have a seat at the table. Southwest Airlines is apologizing for the breakdown, blaming it on weather. But for now, we're focused on restoring the reliability and level of customer experience we expect of ourselves and that you expect from us. As of Thursday, the company says one in three of its flights are back on schedule and it's promising nearly normal operations by Friday. We're continuing the work to make this up to you. The Department of Transportation is promising to hold the airline accountable. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says the problems at the airline were not all weather related. He says the department is working with Southwest to guarantee all impacted customers get refunds. Now, already we are seeing Southwest Airlines cancel a few dozen flights for Friday, but that is down from the 2,300 flights that were canceled on Thursday. Now, lawmakers are promising to take action once they return to Washington next week. For now in Washington, Raquel Martin. Back to you. Thank you, Raquel. Well, if you are one of the unfortunate travelers to have had your flight canceled recently or an airline lost your bag, you're not alone. Take a look at this. Salt Lake International Airport has piles of lost luggage lined up and stacked around the baggage claim. Many travelers have been left in limbo without a flight home and no word on where their luggage has ended up. Now, we spoke to one man who flew into Vegas, drove to Salt Lake, and was lucky enough to find his luggage. The trip was okay. The last last two days was all right, but we have only one pair of shirt and pant. That's it. And we have to live in five days on that. Okay, the family managed to find their luggage today, all in time to head home. They're working with Southwest to reimburse them for any damaged items. And now to the latest on the recovery from snowstorms in the Northeast. That deep freeze across western New York breaking as temperatures rise. In Buffalo, the driving ban has lifted freeing drivers to dig out their cars once buried beneath more than four feet of snow. Though power is back on for many, the National Guard is making door-to-door -door wellness checks after widespread outages. People have been working around the clock since the beginning of this storm. Nationwide, the storm now blamed for at least 60 deaths, with more than 30 counted from the Buffalo area. Among those victims, 52-year-old Monique Alexander, you see here, her daughter, confirming to ABC News a man found her mother's body on a street and contacted her family on Facebook. Buffalo now prepping for flooding due to the rising temperatures and that melting snow. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Thomas Keyboy. Weather rates certified 11 years in a row. Okay, and back here at home, we have a little bit of a calm before more to come, right, Thomas? Yeah, we've seen definitely calmer weather today, but we've still seen at least a few passing showers. South southwestern Utah earlier today saw times of rain and snow. Moab has seen a little bit of wet weather as we've gone through tonight, seeing mostly cloudy skies. You can barely see the silhouette of the cliffs off in the distance, but that's always a very pretty view. Meanwhile, in northern Utah, where we saw a little bit of sunshine earlier today, we actually are seeing a little bit in the way of some wet weather tonight, mainly up in the higher terrain, seeing a little bit of light snow up at Solitude. I'm going to go ahead and call this an appetizer. 
of what is to come starting tomorrow, but always love to see snow up in our mountains. Meanwhile, as for our temperatures, we're sitting at 27 in Logan. It's 37 in Ogden, 37 in Salt Lake City, 33 in Provo and 38 degrees in St. George. These temperatures that you see really aren't going to move that much as we go through tonight as we hold on to at least a slight chance for a few showers during the overnight hours. But as we go into tomorrow, one of a couple of systems that we're going to see over the next several days will be moving in and the chance for wet weather will start to increase across the board as quickly as daybreak tomorrow. And those daytime highs are also going to run just a little bit warmer thanks to a warm front that's going to be moving through. So as we look at the satellite and radar across with the bigger picture of the western United States, you can see a little bit of that wet weather moving away to the east. Meanwhile, a warm front and cold front going to be approaching from our west and by tomorrow morning around daybreak. This particular future cast showing at least a decent chance of seeing snow along most of the I-15 corridor because we're going to drop close to freezing tonight along the Wasatch front. So there is a chance that for the Friday morning Morning commute. We could be talking about straight snow, so be careful on that Friday morning commute. But with that warm front moving through, temperatures will be warming up steadily as we go through the day, and the snow line along the Wasatch front will start to increase, and we'll likely start to talk about valley rain and mountain snow, mainly for the northern two-thirds of the state. Southern Utah, not going to have as high of a chance compared to northern Utah, but that chance will at least still exist. Meanwhile, if you're in eastern Box Elder County and Cache Valley, since it's going to take a little while longer for the warm air to reach you, you're likely going to spend most of the day with a better chance of snow rather than valley rain and mountain snow with heavy snow continuing up in our mountains. And those temperatures really not going to be moving much as we go from Friday into our Saturday. And by Saturday afternoon with another warm front moving through, that snow line could climb to and maybe even above 6,500 feet in northern Utah. So valley rain, mountain snow will continue, heavy mountain snow mainly in the northern portion of the state. But as we go from Saturday afternoon, afternoon into Sunday morning. A cold front will start to approach and I think at this time we're going to have the best chance of seeing widespread wet weather across the Beehive State where even our southern mountains will start to see times of heavy snow. But with the cold front then moving through, if the moisture holds on long enough behind the cold front, the valley rain that we have in northern Utah could switch over to valley snow. So a very tricky forecast in our valleys. Not the case up in our mountains where heavy snow is expected. Winter storm mornings will be going into effect as early as 5 o'clock tomorrow morning from the central mountains to the northern mountains. The Wasatch back that'll begin at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning and will continue through 5 o'clock in the morning on Monday. 1 to 3 feet for our northern and central mountains, isolated up to 4 feet, 6 to 12 inches for the Wasatch back, isolated up to 2 feet. And for our southern mountains, we could see one to two feet with isolated up to three feet. Meanwhile, in eastern Box Elder County, Cache Valley, that's going to begin a winter weather advisory tomorrow. And we'll continue through Friday night where we could see two to four inches, maybe upwards of eight inches in localized areas, mainly on the benches. Then for southwestern Wyoming and also for the Bear River Valley and for Bear Lake, that'll begin tomorrow. And we'll continue through five o'clock in the morning on Monday where we could see five to ten inches of snow. So we're going to be talking about impacts across the state. If you haven't travel plans through the New Year's Day weekend. Just make sure that you're keeping the weather in mind, especially if you're going to be in the higher terrain and the avalanche danger is also expected to remain high in St. George. Daytime high of 49 tomorrow, a slight chance of rain, but a better chance of rain down in St. George for both Saturday and Sunday. Daytime highs will be in the 50s over the weekend, an AM chance on Monday, but this active weather could persist even through the middle of next week, but it will be a little bit cooler by next week. Thanks to that cold front on Sunday. Then along the Wasatch front, snow could transition over to rain tomorrow, then mainly valley rain and mountain snow on Saturday. Rain could transition back to snow on Sunday, a slight chance early on Monday, then we bring back a better chance going into the middle of next week.